Hey guys, welcome back, and by popular demand, we're going to be going through the auto layout. As I did in the previous tutorial, just kind of an overview, we're going to detail some of the auto layout features and how awesome it is to develop within Xcode 4.5 with this new auto layout. So what we've got is uh, basically we're working with an Xcode 4.5, and one thing you should know about auto layouts is it only works with iOS 6 devices. So any previous operating systems that the devices are running, whether it's iOS 5 or 4.3, it's not going to be um, working in coherence with this auto layout that uh, iOS 6 works with. So as you guys navigate to your main storyboard, or whether you're, it's a storyboard for an iPhone or iPad, <clears throat> click your storyboard and click on anywhere in the background or even your view controller. And if you go up to the file inspector here, you'll see that within the interface builder documentation, there is a use auto layout checkbox here. So we can enable and disable our auto layout. So in this case, I want to disable our auto layout just so we can show you kind of the difference between the two, the old struts and springs that, uh, that was previously used and the auto layout here. So I threw a simple object onto the screen, the segmented controller. And what I want to do is run this application in our simulator and see how that affects. So right now it looks like we're using the four inch retina display iPhone 5 display. And that is what our object looks like on screen in the portrait view. As we shift over to the landscape view, our object actually disappears and goes off screen. So that's something we'd probably want to fix. Now with the struts and springs, you could go in and you can modify it so it wouldn't do that. But when you got into more complex user views, you saw that uh, it got quite quite intensive with struts and springs. You had to hard code some stuff, and that's what the auto layout actually relieves, which is huge. I mean, my grandma could do some of this stuff. And uh, so that's pretty sweet. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna enable the auto layout over in the right, just as you disabled it, just do the opposite. And what I wanna show you is as you drag your objects onto screen, you've obviously got your your kind of guidelines there for centers, for bottom, whatnot. But uh, the newest thing that you'll see is we have these constraints. And these are directly associated to your auto layout. Now the constraints are basically relationships based on different um, based on different figures. So in this case, this constraint is based on our views bottom edge here to the uh, bottom edge of our object here. We also see another constraint here, which is the horizontal center. And so as we drag this around, you'll see as we drag and drop it, we have two different constraints. We have what's called a uh, horizontal spacer, the leading edge right here. And then again, we have our vertical space, which is from the bottom there. So those two constraints are uh, holding this button into play or this object into place. So go ahead and run your application and you'll see that even, it, even if it's a retina four inch, it's gonna hug the left side by a certain value and the bottom side by a certain value. And as we shift to the landscape view, the same is true. It's gonna hug the left horizontal spacing, leading edge and the bottom with the vertical spacing there. So that's one advancement that started but let's go into a little bit more detail on how this works and why it's advantageous to use these constraints in the, the uh, auto layout as well. So now what I want you guys to do, well, let me show you a few shortcuts. Uh, the first shortcut is this little form factor. And so right now we're looking at a 3.5 inch screen for the iPhone 4, 4S, iPod, so on and so forth. But the iPhone 5 screen is obviously, as you guys know, a little bit larger, it's four inches. And by clicking that button there, you apply a four inch screen and you see how your view is apparent to your user. So we can flip between the two and make sure that those two look good. Another thing that you guys may not know about about Xcode is if you click your view controller, go up to your attributes, you can change the orientation without actually having to run your application and see how your objects look on screen. But you can change it right here by just flipping between the two. So we can flip between portrait and landscape. We're going to run it most likely just to uh, quickly show you guys, but uh, that's just another shortcut. Now, getting into auto layouts. With the auto layouts, you'll see that uh, we have the constraints, and you can click on the constraints, 
and you've got some attributes associated to it because they are objects as well. The other area that you can look at the constraints is over in your left dock, which you'll see a new area called constraints. And so we've got a horizontal spacer, which I talked about here, which is based on your leading edge and your vertical spacer here. Now what I want you guys to do is drag that object into the middle here. We're going to put it set, drop dead center both horizontally and vertically. And you'll see that we have our horizontal um, constraint here which basically centers our object on screen. And then we have a weird constraint that uh, is a constant value of 208. So if you look at the attributes here it's equal to 208 pixels from the top of the screen. Now that may play an issue because let's go ahead and run this and I'll show you why that may play an issue. Because right now we're looking at it's perfectly centered between uh, horizontally here, but now we're 208 pixels from the top. So it's not exactly centered on this 4 inch screen. And as we switch over to the landscape view, you'll see that again we're 208 pixels down, we're horizontally um, centered here. So it's not exactly center as we wanted it to be. So that is one thing where you got to watch out for auto layout. Yes, it may do some awesome stuff for you, but you do have to configure it to what you are looking for for the user. So now let's go back and let's fix this um, to make this consistent with being center, no matter what, what orientation the view's in. So now if we click our object and we go down here to the shortcuts, you'll see that uh, we have pins and we have alignments. Now the other area you can look at these alignment and pins is if you go up to the editor on the top menu here, you'll see align, arrange, and pin. So in this case what we want to do is we want to align our object to be vertically center as well. So now we have a horizontal and we have a vertical center um, associated to this particular segmented controller. So I'm going to go ahead and run that, make sure that's exactly what I'm looking for. So it looks center there in the 4 inch display as we flip to the uh, the uh, port, the landscape view it's centered and centered horizontally and vertically. So now we're going to go back and uh, we're going to go ahead and click our object once more and I want you guys to note that as you go over to the constraints over to the left hand side you'll see that we have our center constraint um, horizontally that has this purple and then we have our center Y which is uh, our vertical alignment that we actually put into place, which is the vertical, that's blue. So the blue ones are basically user generated, which we can delete. The purple ones are going to be generated by Xcode as kind of the guidelines for what you're looking for. We can't delete those. We can replace them with another constraint that may be more advantageous to what we're looking for, but you can't actually delete those because it needs some reference for that button as it, as it, uh, compiles your program and puts those objects into place for you. So just to note there, and as I mentioned, you've got these little shortcuts down here as far as the line. You've got other shortcuts here for your pinning, and I'm, we're going to get into that in the next tutorial. But the last thing that I want you guys to experiment with as kind of a precursor to the next tutorial is I want you guys to put a couple buttons on screen, all right? So throw, you know, maybe throw a button on there and then I want you to throw another button on there and I want you to play with these until we go through the next tutorial about pinning these and understanding how they work because the more complex your user your view is the more constraints and the more understanding you're gonna have to have for this auto layout to work especially between the devices as you switch between the four and the three so that's a good introduction test out some of those constraints see what you guys think let some comments flow below this and I will get back to you guys as far as how to do it, and we'll move on from there. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial.